Hello, everyone. Good day. Hi there. Hello. Very nice. Ni hao. Hey, Adam. So, what are all these getting practical with digital media videos all about, anyway? Well, I'm glad you asked. And before I answer that, let me put my hand down from this awkward position and turn towards you. Probably the best way to explain what these videos are for is to first explain what they're not for. As I've been saying elsewhere, it's not the role of teaching staff to teach you how to use the various media forms and platforms that we'll be engaging with in this unit, but to facilitate your learning about their use. With very few exceptions, I'm not going to use these videos to tell you how to log in or where to click and what to do specifically to make something work in a certain program. That's not my role, and it doesn't need to be because, in the vast majority of cases, you already know how to do it. Contemporary digital media culture has become so accessible and so user-friendly that you pretty much can just pick it up as you go. You go by your intuition, and there's a real emphasis on the need to explore and to play, and that's very relevant to this unit. And just to highlight this, I want to show you a few minutes of a video that I made a couple of years ago. This little extract is easily the most used footage of all of my collection that I've used over the years. I bring it out at presentations to undergraduate students, to postgraduates, to academics, to anyone who's thinking of developing their online persona more. And really, it just puts a really simple point in a really clear way. And it's all thanks to Tiffany. You have a wealth of user-friendly and intuitive applications available to you, often directly accessible from your smartphone. And the answer to almost every question can be found by a quick Google search or a YouTube demo video. One of Tiffany's daily rituals serves as a perfect illustration of this issue. Think about how you learned how to use Facebook. Did someone show you? Did you read a book about it? No. You learned by observing what other people were doing, by experimenting with what you had available, and just as importantly, as Tiffany is showing here, by repetition. And if you were having trouble with something, you probably Googled the answer or asked someone on Facebook. Keep Tiffany's lesson here in mind as you work through the unit. The answer is quite literally at your fingertips. And to give an example of this, before today I have never before used the slideshow and video making website Powtoon, which you're seeing a product of right now. All I did was log on, I went through a basic maybe 10 second tutorial which didn't teach me all that much, and I just taught myself how to use it over a couple of hours. Sometimes it's hard to get your head around the nuts and bolts of things. Sometimes things aren't as intuitive as they might be. That's part of the learning process. But you'll find that just by a bit of trial and error, by playing around and exploring, by looking up some YouTube demo videos for pretty much anything that's out there, you find your way and you learn how to learn how to use things very quickly and very effectively. I often get students to introduce themselves by making an About Me page. I don't need to teach them how to do this. Reflecting what I was saying earlier, students will learn by doing and by observing others. They will almost always look at a number of the profiles shared by their peers before they put theirs together, and that's more than fine. It's a big part of how we learn things. About Me is not the most groundbreaking or important online profile to have. Since I first started using the site several years ago, a number of changes have seen the ability to interact with other profiles and create groups discontinued, once again underlining the need to keep up to date with developments and be always learning. About Me is arguably no longer what you would call social media. However, perhaps partly for this reason, it's proven very useful as an accessible and user-friendly warm-up exercise for students who might be a little anxious about putting themselves out there online. About Me might be essentially a static page, but it's also a clear and concise hub to connect your various online profiles. The social links feature is a really good way to get you thinking about the cross-pollination of your different accounts, including when this might not be appropriate or useful. In other words, you want to connect up your online profiles when they should be connected, in order to have a more coherent, searchable and powerful online presence. By the way, I rarely see students including anything in their email signature, and About Me can be perfect for this until you build up something better. Writing a short bio and choosing an image that best represents you in the way you want to be seen isn't easy. But given that every little thing we do online means something and says something about us, this is really good practice. Lastly, getting feedback can be the perfect way to help you find out how you're portraying yourself. You might well find out something you hadn't thought of yourself. And to further highlight the real importance of asking for people's advice, I remember the very first year that I was using About Me in my seminars. I had my profile up on the screen, and one of the students wisely asked me, 
why are you using the third person when you talk about yourself in your bio? And I hadn't even really realized that I was doing it. So I changed it right there and then. And that was because a student pointed it out to the teacher. It might sound like a cliche, but we do learn as much from you, if not more, than you can learn from us. So this kind of online making and collaboration with digital media is what this unit really hopes to capture. And I really look forward to seeing how you go with it. Good luck with your exploration. Have fun. And above all, remember Tiffany's lesson. Observe, do, repeat, and play. Where is everybody? Aww.